Uh, if you have a, a 0 0.7 to 1.1 birth rate when it takes 2.1 live births to sustain a society, and you're up against a, a group that has an 8.1 birth rate, it's just a matter of time. It's, and like you said, it's just a matter of sheer numbers. And, you know, another thing that a lot of folks don't realize is that, you know, Constantinople uh, fell in 1453. And, of course, it was in 1492 that Columbus set sail to, uh, to the New World. And the whole reason why Ferdinand and his Isabella uh, asked for a new route to uh, for trade because the the Muslims who had taken over and renamed it Istanbul cut off the trade route to to go to the to to China and they had to find a new route. So this is something that is not new to Western civilization and right now it's just another chapter in an ongoing book and we've got to have people that stand up. Except that they understood the threat then and we do not now. Well, we do not now. We had well, the Poles, the, the, the people that fought them right outside of the, the Battle of Vienna. That's right. They, complete, they, were, they were brilliant. They had a strategy. They had a plan. Why? Because they understood their enemy. We do not have that. We have no plan. We have no strategy. And we have no comprehension of the enemy that we face. They will be more successful than they were then. They were quite successful then until we had brilliant leadership coming from Poland and other places to stop them. Right. I do not know that we have that now. Well, that you the, the opportunity word that you brought up was brilliant leadership and that is what it's going to take because there are many of us that understand this threat but until we have the people at the at the helm at the you know at the reins of this country uh we could lose this country and you see what is happening in in london which they're calling london london, london the stand mm -hmm. and you see what's happening in france and you see what's happening in the netherlands we don't want that type of thing to happen here but uh, if we're not careful if we don't stand on principle if we don't stand on the judaic Christian principles that uh, establish this country. You know, I believe that we can coexist with others. But the thing is that Absolutely. I am not willing to sacrifice, you know, our traditional values for the sake of someone else. Well, now, uh, you, you must know. have found it absolutely appalling when Obama said that we were also a uh, Muslim nation. Well, yeah, yeah, and he said that in front of the Turkish General Assembly, and he also said that in the, the University of Cairo. So that is, that is, you know, it's just disgusting. It's That's an insult. All it's an insult. It yeah. Is. Yeah, I, I kept trying to find in my history books uh, the Muslim contributions to the forming of this nation. You I know what? Blood was, blood was flowing like a river. When, when, when these people were bombarding them. The Europeans' exposure to, to Islam was, was a conquering army. That's how they knew them, okay? Yeah. Where they were, they were beheading people, and there was blood, they say, flowing like rivers. Yeah. Okay, that was their exposure to Islam. Well, and the thing that concerns me the most uh, for both of you is that they are watching how we react. And if we don't have leadership that will react strongly, you're going to have more Fort Hood uh, attacks. You're going to have more right. Carlos Bledsoe shooting soldiers at recruiting stations. You're going to have more Times Square attacks. And, uh, you know, it's just going to ratchet up. And if we don't, uh, as you see this administration, the, the, the way that they're treating Israel, uh, that's a very dangerous precedent. And uh, mm -hmm. that Amen. something's going to happen there very soon. And if Amen. Israel falls, then we're next. Well, you yeah, know, that's we, exactly I mean, right. Well, we do have some history, though, of, of capitulating to these people because um, uh, we were paying off the Barbary pirates for years until Jefferson came along and said not one more dime for Absolutely. tribute. Which, by the way, is why he had a Quran in the oh, first place. Right. Wait a minute. But brilliant leadership again, yeah. Jim, okay? Someone who understood the threat. Right. And had a strategy. Exactly. Okay, right. We don't have that right now. Well, yeah, I mean, look at, you talk about brilliant leadership. Look at uh, General Casey, whose leadership brilliance has been dulled by political correctness, who said, as bad as the Fort Hood shooting was, it would be worse if our diversity was a casualty. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Well, we've got a bunch of, I'll tell you what, it's, it's absolutely frightening. It's, uh, and we are dumbed down. The average person doesn't know half of what we just talked about right now. Yeah, in case you didn't hear uh, the soundbite of Eric Holder that we're discussing here this morning uh, with uh, Lieutenant Colonel West, let me just play it for you. It's only a uh, few seconds long. This is a question and answer on the, uh, he was, uh, I think it was Lamar Smith. Yes. Uh, yeah, was, was questioning Eric Holder as to the motivations, <laughs> as if we had to really guess, uh, for the Times Square bomber. The radical Islam could have been one of the reasons... There are a variety of reasons why people... But was radical Islam one of them? There are a variety of reasons why people do these things. Some of them are potentially religious. Okay, but all I'm asking is if you think among those variety of reasons, radical Islam might have been one of the reasons uh, that the individuals took the steps that they did. Are you uncomfortable attributing any of their actions to radical Islam? It sounds like... No, it. I don't want to say anything negative about a religion that is... No, no, not I'm, I'm not talking about a 
I'm talking like a lot about radical Islam. Oh. I'm not talking about the general religion. You know, they don't want to say anything about religion, but don't don't be the first ones to say those Christians. Yeah, well, those Christians. You know, and even Lamar Smith isn't being honest here. We're not talking about radical Islam. We're talking about Islam. This is what it does. Read the source. It's fine if he wants to put it that way, but the fact that he can't even respond to that yeah. is absolutely amazing to me. Absolutely. When you qualify and, it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, we're not talking about Muslims. We're not talking about individuals. We're talking about an ideology that has a history of violence. And, and it's, it's, you know, history and fact are all on your side, and that's what you need to, to stand by. And so it, it, it is very uh, despicable. It's very con disconcerting that the Attorney General is, I don't know if he's not read up on it or if he just flat out is uh, refusing to admit the enemy and the, admit the thing that fuels them. But the Attorney Attorney General, because we know others have been willing to point the finger at Christians and say they, those right-wing extremists. Well, that's easy. That's easier because you know one of the, the, the final tenet of a uh, of a socialist ideology is to create a secular state, and I think that the people on the left find it much easier to attack uh, Judeo-Christian principles than it than it is to attack the, the true enemy. And, and I think it's fear-driven. I, I think that the, uh, the the Islam has them afraid to, to stand up and say what needs to be said. Yeah, but you know, also too, I mean, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Absolutely, there's an unholy alliance. Well, sure. Center. I mean, this is the hey, hey, ho, ho, Western Civ has got to go crowd from the 1960s, and they're ready to belly up to anybody who has the same philosophy that they do, if, if not for at least a different reason. But you know something? That that also has a historical precedent, because uh, one of the Byzantine Empire, emperors did the exact same thing and invited the uh, Muslim armies in to help him with internal... Uh, uh, strife in the uh, in the empire, and of course that led to the conquest of the Balkans, and eventually to the demise of the Byzantine Empire. You know that that leads yeah. that leads it me might. to another observation, and t tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I know Slobodan Milosevic was not a nice guy. Uh, he, I guess he was a communist, but he was a nationalist, which is why the UN folks didn't like him very much. But um, and he was, I mean, I always had the feeling we were, like, on the wrong side of that somehow. Well, the thing is, I, I would never, you know, come down on the support of anyone in active genocide, but no one ever understood the, the, the reason behind the whole contention between Serbs and, and the Muslims there in the Balkans. And uh, the whole Battle of Kosovo Polji, which I think occurred in 1387, which was when the, uh, the Muslims massacred the surrendered uh, the Serbian army. And so those things are, are always... Uh, remembered in that, that part of the area. So we need to understand the history and what fuels some of the, the present uh, clashes and fault lines, cultural, religious, what have you. But, I mean, I, I can't support someone going out and slaughtering people. But, you know, once again, we, we went to the rescue of the of the Muslim community there in the Balkans, and uh, we did not get any respect. We did not get any, uh, any kind words. As a matter of fact, uh, Osama bin Laden just rewarded us with more terrorist attacks, being at the uh, Kobar Towers, being at the U.S. embassies, the U.S.S. coal, uh, just countless amounts of other attacks. Yeah, well, you can't make friends with some people, I guess. You just oh, can't. Oh, I, have, well, I have another question about about this this imam. I believe his name is Ralph. Is that it? R A U F? Is that is that the Ralph? <laughs> Ralph. Um, maybe I'm wrong about this, but it's the imam in New York who's building this mosque. Mm -hmm. And and I heard him on I heard him on uh, somebody's show. I forget. He's very, he's very clever, and he does a lot of tap dancing. He's verbally very, very manipulative. Uh, about how this is going to be all about oh outreach God. and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. if you tell me that the opening day is September 11th, That's the opening day. I think that pretty much blows all of that other stuff right out of the water. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. And the uh, the Arabic term is called takia, which means that... Uh, Tequila. Tequila. I know. <laughs> which means, yeah, they are, they are allowed to lie to, to further their yeah, position. Absolutely. absolutely. That's what it's all about. All right, it's go west. 2010.com. Go west. 2010.com. Got a question for you, real quick. Huh? How would you feel about yeah. filling in on a radio show someday? <laughs> well, I can mean, you do that while you're campaigning? Well, I don't think you need to call your lawyer because I don't think I'm allowed to do that because then you know the next thing you know you you get into the you, you know how liberals are. And the next thing you know they they want to their guy doing they want their guy doing it. So that would be the most boring three hours of radio I gotta tell you. Well, you know what, Bert? But after this election is yeah, over, yeah, we I, want you to yeah, fill in for us. <laughs> I think you'd be a great fill in. I do too. I think it'd be fabulous. Well, well I'll do my best. We we gotta run here, but uh, God bless you. Yeah, thanks for and thank you for your service. No, nah, thank you, yeah. and, and we. We'll just continue our service.